It is April the 29th, 2015, and I'm going to, this is a follow-up to the uh, video I published last night. I'm going to try to make all this in one uh, videoing and post it quickly. I've made some measurements. I took my two uh, really nice 5881s and these uh, KT66s that were damaged. Made some measurements and notes here. 5881s measured 17 milliamps of plate, 580 microamps of screen current, 20 milliamps, same screen current. The good KT66 measures 12 milliamps and 0.4 milliamps of screen current. The bad one is 11.4 milliamps, 0.44. You would say, hmm, what's really wrong with that tube? It really doesn't measure wrong. It really doesn't look like there's anything big deal wrong with it. Okay. Well, at the suggestion, I don't know why I didn't think of it last night, of one of the viewers, thank you, sir. I think a couple of you mentioned it. Why don't I monitor the screen current when I open the plate? Well, that's what I'm doing. So I've got the, I'm monitoring screen current now. Right now, this one's measuring uh, about point, see, I'm on the uh, 1.2 milliamp scale. So it's about 0 0.4, or 3, about 430 microamps. See, that's, that's over here in... It's actually this one, see, it's 400.44. That's measured about 0.43. Okay, well watch what happens. I'm gonna open the plate circuit abruptly, or m momentarily, I'm gonna to toggle it on and off. Watch what happens to the screen current. See, it goes extremely high. Now this tube's already damaged, and I'm gonna put it on the 12 milliamp scale, and I'll do it again. See, wow, see how it jumps up? No doubt losing plate voltage is going to damage your screen. This poor tube has just sparkled all it can sparkle. As many of you have said, it damaged the screen in some way. It just can't sparkle anymore. I'm not going to do it with this one. Again, like I said last night, I'm not going to destroy it just to just so we'll have a sparkle tonight. So the thing about it is, is measuring these tubes and looking at these in a static condition, you might say, well, you know, what's the problem? Well, here's the problem. I'm going to drive it just like it is, without changing a thing. And uh, here we are watching it. This is output power in watts, 33 watts. THD, 0.6, one kilohertz, sine wave. Looks pretty good, huh? I've got it attenuated. This is insignificant, it's just a random number. I'm gonna start uh, driving it harder. There it is starting to clip already. Power went up to 38 watts. Distortion's up to 4%. Let's see, let's drive it a little harder. Look at that. See, that's because of that bad tube. I know that for a fact. 37 watts, 12%. It just went to hell. It'll put out well over 40 watts. Oh, this cotton picking thing. It's always trying to save its screen, always shutting itself off. Uh, but that's it. That's that damaged tube. That's 100% of a fact. And only 38 watts at 12%. Kind of interesting when I attenuate it a little bit more. It actually went up to 40 watts. Wow. Hey, it's looking better. I don't know. It's down to 1% at 40 watts. One and a half percent at 40 watts. You know it should do a lot better than that, and you can see at the top and the bottom. But it seems like the tube's almost healing. So it damaged the tube. It's irreparable. And I can also see. Let's go ahead and stop this thing. I can also see that if you if you have an intermittent uh, female pin around the, the male pins of the tube and you're there you know whacking them and you knock it loose even momentarily well here again I'll do it once more we're monitoring the screen current if I open the plate circuit so I open this little switch right here to open the plate see it jumps way up I bet if that were a, a, a new tube in there or if it were the other one I bet it would beat on the inside now, like I said also last night, I'll, I'll repeat this too. Let me turn this thing off. I would, uh, I would not 
go through and uh, and, and attempt to replace these sockets. These pro sockets are probably as, as good as man ever made. Let me unplug it too. But just get down in it with a very nice, sharp, delicate instrument and, um, and tighten the, the female pins up a little bit by getting, by, you know, by uh, getting in on the side and moving them inward with a needle or something. Of course, making darn sure this thing is powered off and the capacitors are drained or you'll get a you get a nasty shock from pin three or four. Yeah, these I wouldn't replace these sockets. They're probably, like I say, as bad as good as this ever, man ever made. The sockets I'm seeing now in, in some of the musical amps, which I don't do anymore, they're just they're just pathetic. They really are. The metal's so soft that by the time you pull the tube out once, you've wallet it out, and and you're just asking for trouble. And what a sad thing, you know, to have your tubes blown up. And then you go put a brand new set in there, and just a little bit of bumping around, even from the uh, from the vibration of the music, can can vibrate the pins loose. Bzz, there goes those tubes. So how many sets of tubes do you put in before you realize uh, it's the socket, and you know you've blown up hundreds of dollars worth of uh, stuff. Thanks again, guys. You're the greatest. It's uh, it's really good to figure this stuff out and and have it verified and and all suggestions. Much appreciated. Really enjoyed doing this. Hope you enjoy it too. Well, you know I had to do one more thing. I had to show you how well this thing actually does perform with a good set of tubes, these little 5881s. Uh, <clears throat> without adjusting anything, just plugging them in, turning it right back on where I left it a while ago. There's what it looks like. No clipping. There's its output. 42.7 watts at 0.13%. That's what you expect. Let me start increasing it a little bit. Let's see how it goes up. 43, 44, 45. Oops. Okay, let's see. That's 16, 15.9. 15 46 watts. 47, 47. Okay, 49 watts right at 1%. See? I mean, that's that's what you expect out of an old Mac amp. Get it all with. Do a, does a full 50 watts below 1%. And there's a sine wave. And those uh, KT66s used to do that. Well, one of them damaged. You know, it's really, it's really uh, makes you want to scratch your head. You can measure all of these static currents. You can measure them on fancy uh, tube testers. Actually, the tube testers did tell us something. Actually, the tube testers actually told us a bit more than uh, uh, just these static currents. So anyway, for what it's worth, there it is. Doing what it's supposed to. Up there, 50 watts at a half percent now. That's just the way I like it.